I'm Rabbi Jonathan Aaron of Temple Emanuel of Beverly Hills, and this is Rabbi Sarah Bassin of Temple Emanuel of Beverly Hills and Newground. We are proud to host this moment of prayer and solidarity with our multi-faith partners in response to the attack on our fellow congregation, Beth Israel of Coleyville, Texas. The scourge of anti-Semitism in the world today calls for vigilant attention and concerted action by all people. The responsibility does not lie just with Jews. At the same time, we resist the impulse to stigmatize an entire religious tradition based on the actions of one hate-filled person. Much has been said commending Rabbi Charlie's interfaith commitments in recent days, appropriately so. But negative sentiments about Muslims, some subtle and some not, have started to creep into social media, into mainstream conversations as well. And so begins the cynical and cyclical accusations in the wake of trauma that happens like this, that cross-cultural work is not only pointless, but actually harmful to those who let their guard down. Interfaith work is rarely rooted in naivete, but rather in the realistic understanding of the prejudices that are ingrained in our own communities. The most important part of this work calls us to face the prejudices that provide the foundation upon which extremists build their fortresses. In so many contexts, we are learning that it falls short to say, this is not who we are. We had once hoped that professing distance from hatred would absolve us of the responsibility for it, but it does not. Instead, we are called to understand the ways in which we are complicit in the problematic rhetoric that we tolerate and sometimes profess that then gets carried to the extremes by a problematic few. Many of us, all of us, have stood shoulder to shoulder for press conferences like these, taking turns in different roles, as each of our communities have been on the receiving end of attacks of terror and violence in recent years. And I am so deeply grateful to the faith leaders that I work with, knowing the hard work that they are doing to confront anti-Semitism in their communities. And unfortunately, I know from this experience and other experiences that the aftermath of this weekend will call me to do the hard work of confronting, anti, of confronting Islamophobia in my own community. These moments are a reminder that the work of uprooting hate is a constant in our spiritual work. And perhaps we can draw inspiration from Rabbi Citron Walker of Colleyville that his kind, his warmness, his welcoming, his loving disposition is in fact a spiritual response to the evil in the world, not a blindness to it. Even in the wake of this trauma, Rabbi Citron Walker pushes us not to lose the balance of security and sanctuary. He reminds us, people are looking to pray People are looking for community, and they're asking the question, do I belong? And we need to stress to them and to the whole community that, and the whole community has to be able to stress to them that yes, you do belong. So we pray, not just for our safety and security, but for the integrity of our faith that acts of terror like this will not diminish our commitment to welcoming the stranger, that more people will be called to guard our tongues from evil and hateful speech that gives license to such acts. And we pray the unfulfilled words that President Washington wrote to a synagogue in the early days of our republic. May the children of the stock of Abraham who dwell in this land, continue to merit and enjoy the goodwill of the other inhabitants, while everyone shall sit in safety 
under his own vine and fig tree, and there shall be none to make him afraid. May all of us, Muslim, Jewish, Baha'i, Sikh, Christian, Hindu, Buddhist, Jain, all of our communities, faith-based and secular, find this safety, that there shall be none to make us afraid. It's my honor to welcome Salam al Mariadi of the Muslim Public Affairs Council to speak next. Thank you, Sarah. It is important for all of us to be here today to demonstrate our solidarity because that's what our religious tradition dictates. This synagogue is part of my sacred space. The Jewish religion is part of the divine religions based on Islam. Therefore, it is our responsibility as Muslims, especially American Muslims, to speak out against anti-Semitism. This scourge is not a Jewish problem. It is a social problem. So wherever we find it, we must speak out against it. Justice is not determined by making sure that I have rights. Justice is determined by making sure that the other has rights, however we define the other. And true religion is when we see that there is no other, but that we are one, just as there is one God, there is one humanity and one human family. The second point is that law enforcement alone cannot solve this problem. Just like government dip diplomacy is deficient in our world problems, we need people-to-people -people diplomacy. This kind of security where we only rely on cameras and security guards is deficient because we need people-to-people -people security. We need human security. When communities gather at the synagogue and say, this is our space and we will defend it. When it is known that we offer protection and security to one another, that is true human security to help support our national security. And finally, when it comes to religious tradition, all of our religions tells us that the one thing that God has given us that must be defended, that must flourish, is the human spirit. And so we will not give up by letting one deranged individual dictate the terms for how our religious communities should communicate and should interact. And therefore, we must move from the lens of extremism and marginalize extremists to the lens of the mainstream communities and give them that power of speech. And we believe by doing this, we will offer more protection to our sacred space, to all houses of worship, to this synagogue and every synagogue around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Salam. I'd like to welcome Rabbi Sharon Browse of ICAR. Good morning, thank you. Special thanks to my friends Salam Almariadi and, and Professor David Myers for bringing all of us together today. As we have stood together so many times over the past many years as our communities have been under attack, as we've stood together for black lives, as we've stood together to protect Muslims, as we've stood together to cry out against anti-Semitism, to cry out for the safety and for the dignity of immigrants in our midst, and we will continue to stand together. Today we stand together because a terrible breach occurred on Shabbat morning last week when a gunman walked into Congregation Beth Israel. Yet another attack in a devastating thread of terror in our places of worship, whether in Charleston, South Carolina, or Pittsburgh, or Poway, or Christ Church, New Zealand, or Sutherland Spring, Texas, or Oak Creek, Wisconsin. We affirm that no person should ever fear for her life when entering a house of worship, a sanctuary, ever. We're also here because even though law enforcement was initially reluctant to label it as such. This was clearly an anti-Semitic act of terror, part of a dangerous trend of violent attacks targeting Jewish people and targeting our Jewish community. 
All of that, I believe, is easy for good people to agree upon. Here is the harder part. This act was committed by a Muslim extremist, by a religious fundamentalist who was motivated by a toxic, anti-Semitic lie, the conspiracy theory that Jews hold disproportionate or even absolute power, that Jews can control the banks, control the media, control government, even control the weather. This is a dangerous ideology. This is a poison in our system. It is the same ideology that stands at the heart of white nationalism. It is an ideology that increasingly manifests on the political left in movements for social justice, including inexplicably in anti-racism spaces often, the political home for most American Jews. And this ideology has also taken root in some quarters of the Muslim community too. This is very hard for us to talk about because we know that there has been a dangerous rise in Islamophobia and violence against Muslims in America over the last several years. And so we tend to shy away from speaking about it so as not to contribute to the animus or the violence against our Muslim brothers and sisters. And yet we have to be clear, we will not eradicate anti-Semitism, nor will we ever build the beloved community until we're honest about where we are and what the problems are. Just as we must do everything in our power to root out racism and Islamophobia in our Jewish community, we also must root out anti-Semitism wherever it appears, even among our friends and even among other vulnerable groups. We are here today to affirm that we are committed to doing that work and doing it together. We will not live in fear. We will not let terror close our hearts we will not allow the acts of an individual to define our relationship with the collective. We will not lapse into dangerous vilification of the other. We will work to root out hatred of the other within our own communities. And we will continue to dream together of a world in which we, in all of our beautiful diversity and with all of our differences, live side by side in safety, in dignity, in justice, and in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Braus. I'd like to welcome Rabbi Noah Farkas of the Jewish Federation of Los Angeles. All right, sorry. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see so many of you that I haven't actually been in the same room or same space with because of the pandemic. And uh, it's really good to stand with you or to sit with you again. Uh, I'm Rabbi Noah Farkas. I'm the new president and CEO of the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. The mission of the Federation is to support a connected and flourishing Jewish community. And I stand here also as a, as a former pulpit rabbi who understands the balance between trying to welcome the stranger and secure my own community. I'm reminded of the Torah, of the five books of Moses, where there's a, a range of commandments, but the commandment that's given the most is the commandment to care for the orphan, the widow, and the stranger. 36 different times in the Torah is that commandment given. In fact, it's given more than the commandments to observe the Sabbath itself. And I think the reason for that is because we have to balance our love of all people with our own personal observance. That is the heart of our faith. And in that sacred balance, we, like Rabbi Walker, will... We'll try to welcome in those who seem in distress, those who seem that they've been put out by society, those who live at the margins, and try to fulfill those commandments while also protecting the Sabbath. And in this very difficult time with, with rising anti-Semitism, rising Islamophobia, and rising hate, in this time when, when we seem to have less patience for each other, less grace for each other, in this time when the loudest voices seem to be the most viral voices, there has to be a group of individuals, a community, a nation that stands for love and not hate. Hate is easy to spread. Love is more difficult to spread. But hate is, a, is a, as Martin Luther King Jr. once said, hate is too much of a burden to bear because it weighs on the heart, it corrodes at our souls, and it, and it disintegrates society. So I'd rather choose love, love ourselves, love our community and all its diversity, and love our neighbor as much as we try to love ourselves. That's at the heart of the Torah. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Rabbi. I'd like to welcome Rabbi Yosef Kineski of Congregation B'nai David Judea. Good morning, everybody. Shabbat will shortly arrive again at Congregation Beth Israel and in congregations all over the country. And in all of those congregations, we will read the dramatic story of the people standing at the foot of Sinai and hearing the voice of God. The rabbinic tradition teaches that there was one necessary precondition for that event to happen, one prerequisite without which the people would not have been able to discern God's voice amidst the thunder, amidst the cacophonous noise that fills the world. This precondition was that they stand as one person with one heart. This idea is no less true today. When human beings stand apart from one another, in opposition to one another, the noise that is created by our discord and by our friction makes it impossible for any of us to discern the voice of God. It becomes impossible for us to hear the words of the prophets when they envision a reality in which lo yareyu v'lo yashchitu b'chol har kodshi, nothing evil or violent shall be done anywhere upon my holy mountain when the prophets charge us, haskel v'yadoa oti, no God, know that he is a God who loves kindness, a God who pursues justice and righteousness. But when we stand together, when faith communities stand together, when human communities stand together, and more than stand together, we feel together as with one heart, then, then we can hear the voice of God. And when we can hear, we can do. We know from bitter experience over many millennia that the underlying human tendencies toward hatred and violence are tragically not going anywhere. But we also know that every time that faith communities and human communities come together, the virus of violence is deprived of that many more potential hosts. Ki ishechad belevechad, as one person with one heart, we shall prevail. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. I'd like to welcome my friend, Umar Hakim, of Intellect, Love, and Mercy. Greetings. My name is Umar Hakim, Intellect, Love, and Mercy Foundation. What you see behind me is an intersection of faith. Those who enjoy what's right and forbid what is wrong. These are individuals in Los Angeles who support everything that is good about our faith. We do not want the narrative of hate to override our faith. We are all in the pursuit of health, security, and protection. There's a verse, I believe there's a, a Jewish tradition that says, tikkun olam to bring about justice. In Islam, it says, to save a life is like saving all of humanity. And everyone who you see behind me is about saving lives, the organizations, the institutions. This is a, what happened in Texas is a violation of our human securities. So we are asking the policymakers and the lawmakers to come look at our policies we have the paperwork, we have the understanding where we can protect our own. So, because security is prevention. Security is prevention. We only want to educate 
and provide our sanctuaries to be a safe space for the worshipers that attend, especially our children. So in saying this, in reflection, this is happening one too many times in our country. It shouldn't happen. And as said before, we are people helping people, standing in solidarity for the security of one another. So let's start to have these difficult conversations, one-to-ones with one another, so we could go past the salam, so we could go past the salams, so we could pa go past the, uh, uh, the hellos, and start to really, really dig deep, take a deep dive, and understand one another. It's unfortunate that these things have to happen that, we, that brings us together, but we are not firefighters. We are all, we are all people of faith, and we want to exemplify our faith to, to pursue health, security, and protection. Thank you. Thank you, Umar. I'd like to welcome Father Alexi Smith of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Thank you, Rabbi. Once again, the sanctity of Shabbat was shattered last Saturday as our elder brothers and sisters in faith in Texas were subjected to the evil of anti-Semitic hatred and violence. Incidents such as this should shock us out of any complacency in thinking that anti-Semitism is a thing of the past. Alas, it's all too prevalent today. The Catholic Archdiocese expresses its profound sadness at the violence born of hatred against people of faith that has once again manifested itself in our nation. I assure the Jewish community of Los Angeles that the Catholic community here stands with you and for you during this painful time. The Catholic parish located near the synagogue in Texas opened its doors not only to the families of the hostages, caring for them during the ordeal, but also to men and women of other faiths who came together to help, providing a wonderful example of shared humanity for all of us. This attack joins an all too long list of attacks against innocent people, people of all faiths, who only want to come together and to pray. An attack on one house of worship is an attack on all houses of worship. For we stand, as has been said here before, in solidarity with one another. It's a, contra <clears throat> it's a contradiction, a perverting of our teachings to believe that Judaism, Christianity, or Islam could condone such violence. Unfortunately, both in the past and in the present, too many people have been taught to hate, in one form or another, in the name of God. This cannot be abided, and it absolutely must end. While those hostages in Texas are, thank God, physically safe, they will forever be changed. We offer our support and prayers for their healing and for all the members of that synagogue and for all synagogues and temples and houses of worship in the United States. I can think of no better response to this incident than to once again publicly reject all forms of hatred, Islamophobia among them. And to, to do otherwise would serve only to perpetuate the fear and the enmity and the stereotyping stereo typifying that led to last Saturday's attack. We must not become indifferent to the suffering of these and all such victims, and we must recommit ourselves to breaking the shackles of prejudice and intolerance. We must truly become a blessing to one another. Thank you. Thank you, Father. For our final, final speaker of our press conference, it's my honor to welcome up Pastor William Smart of Christ's Liberation Ministries and of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference of Southern California. Pastor. Thank you, Rabbi. You know, word, the words of Martin Luther King, he said, nonviolence is a powerful and just weapon which cuts without, 
without wounding and enables the man who wells it. It is a sword of healing. Right now in America, we have seen this so many times. We can go to Charleston, South Carolina. We can go to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we can go down there in Texas. We constantly see religious people, the brothers and sisters of the Jude Judaism, brothers and sisters of Christians, Islam, always being attacked by some maniac. You know, I'm reminded of the words in the Old Testament. Who is this uncircumcised Jew that they would defy the armies of the living God? We, we're seeing that constantly. But it's time for we as a people of every tradition to say enough is enough. We need to embark in that, whole, that holistic as Rabbi said, beloved community that Dr. King so vividly talked about. We need to overcome the war. We need to overcome white supremacy. We need to overcome um, what we say capitalism. But most importantly, we as a religious community, we got to get together like this. And every time one of us is attacked, we have to be there and we have to rise up. Every time there is an incident, we've got to go to the front line and say enough is enough. We have to speak words of love. We have to speak words of peace. But we must go to the front line and say, you're not going to do this in America. This is America. This is not Trump's America. This is America. This is not Biden's America. This is America. An American where we believe that everybody has a right to worship. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. This now concludes our press conference, but before we wrap up, I do want to acknowledge that we have some additional faith leaders who are with us. We have Rabbi Ken Chasen of Leo Beck. We have Aziza Hassan of Newgrounds. We have Rabbi Arya Cohen, who is of the community, and also David Myers. Thank you for your role in organizing this. Some of our leaders are going to be able to stick around for additional comments. Some are on a tight timeline and do need to go, um, but feel free to grab one of us and ask if you want additional commentary. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for your solidarity.